everyone and welcome to today's video and in this video I will be showing you another book haul. I actually just came back from a vacation to London and when I'm in London one thing I really really like to get my hands on are books so yeah I did tons of book shopping and I just thought I'd show you all of the books that I got. So yeah that's what this video uh, will be about. Let's get to the haul. So the first two books I bought I actually didn't buy at a bookstore but at a vintage clothing store called Blitz which is in the East End around the Brick Lane area thereabouts. I also had some books. So the, f the two books that I bought are William Burroughs' Naked Lunch and uh, Raymond Chandler's The Big Sleep. Um, especially this one I've been trying to get my hands on for quite some time but I always found it a little bit too expensive and here they were only like three pounds or something. So that was a pretty good deal I think and I'm pretty scared to be starting this. Um, I've read blurbs of this and I sort of know what it's about and it's I think it was written on like an acid trip So yeah, this is going to be one crazy ride I think and this one um, the big sleep I actually saw someone reading that while I'm on my flight to London and um, I don't know I read the blurb and it's like some sort of detective mystery thriller kind of uh, Kind of book so I thought Maybe it's cool. I don't know. I've never read it. I've never read anything by this author, but I thought I'd give it a go. And in East London, I also found an independent bookstore uh, called, I think, the Brick Lane Bookshop or something like that. And there I picked up some nonfiction, which I find pretty difficult to find at an affordable price here in the Netherlands if it's in English. The first book I picked up is Oliver Sacks, The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat. Uh, Oliver Sacks, I think he passed away last year or something. And he's a scientist who was really like into like neuroscience and what happens to people's brains when they have strokes and all that and this is like a book filled with stories of how people cope with their brain lacking certain functions and it's a very uh, famous book as well. I've been meaning to read this for a while. Then another book I got is How Music Got Free by Stephen Witt which is pretty much how online piracy and the sort of the race of the mp3 has influenced um, music listening and the music industry at large and sort of how that journey took place and since I'm really into music I thought this would be an interesting read. The last book I picked up on that in that smaller bookstore is Jack London uh, London's The People of the Abyss and this is actually a book uh, Jack London is uh, an English author he was a journalist in the Victorian era, era and he actually went and dressed up as a poor person and lived in the East End, in the Brick Lane area um, and experienced the life of what it means to be poor firsthand at the turn of the 20th century. But I'm expecting this to be a sort of like a take on Victorian London from someone who lived in that period and who actually sort of traded places and uh, his experience is living among the poor people of the East End in London. The biggest chunk of this haul is actually from Waterstone. In my previous book haul I showed you the sequel to this one. This is The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cockman and someone left a comment on that video saying you know you do really need to read the first one before you go and read the second one. Um, and they had it there so I decided to pick that one up. Then I also picked up two books that I saw at my local bookstore but that were either sold out or I found a bit too expensive for what they were. The first book was uh, that I saw here already is Angela Carter's The Magic Toy Shop and this is sort of like a modern gothic novel. It's about a girl who has to move in with her aunt and uncle and her uncle is obsessed with these like lifelike dolls uh, that he makes. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see. This is apparently a classic gothic novel from like the 1960s or something. I'm not sure when it was released anymore, but yeah, um, I love gothic fiction, so this is one for the shelves. And if you've been reading any of my blogs with like my, my little reviews and wrap-ups that I do every single month, uh, you will have noticed that I'm really into uh, like haunted house stories at the moment, and David Mitchell actually came out with a haunted house story which is called Slate House. This is another gothic read for me to get my hands on. When I saw these two in uh, Waterstones, I was really, really happy. This is A Gathering of Shadows and A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. These are books that everybody has been raving about. And I still have to read Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which everybody is also raving about. But yeah, I just thought that when I read the blurbs on the back, they immediately intrigued me. So I wanted to uh, get my hands on these and uh, hopefully I can get to them as soon as possible. 
And at the very last minute, I also spotted this book at Waterstones. This is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. This kind of reminds me of A Clockwork Orange. I mean, that's what this book looks like to me. Um, but when I read what this book is about, it's... I just, I was instantly intrigued. I think this will definitely sort of um, speak to my inner nerd, you could say. Um, so it's about a guy who plays video games uh, trying to solve puzzles in order to like get a big prize or something like that. The fate of humanity resting in your hand. Um, because the video game and humanity have to do something with each other in this book. I can't exactly remember what the synopsis was, but when I read it, I was like, yes, that sounds like something that's right up my street. I need to read this. And then as I was walking around Covent Garden, I spotted Forbidden Planet, and that's a store that I usually set foot in, but I've never actually purchased there, uh, anything there. Um, but now I discovered they had a book section. Uh, and yes, I actually purchased the first two graphic novels ever that I ever bought. And the reason why I wanted to buy these is, first of all, they had a Civil War Marvel um, bind-up of all the Civil War uh, comics. And I've been obsessed with Marvel. I saw the movie when I was in London and I was like, I'm just gonna have to like, sort of keep this as a memento keepsake um, and sort of let that inner nerd out again. But the book that got me sucked into the graphic novel section at Forbidden Planet was this one. And this is Rivers of London Bodywork. I actually have the entire Rivers of London series by Ben Aronovich. Um, they're novels about a constable who does magic. And I actually purchased the last book and showed that in my last book haul. And this book, this graphic novel, is apparently set after the last book I read and before that new one that I purchased. So it's like right in between. So I was like, I have to have this um, because I want to read what the series is about. And apparently the comics are also going on as like a separate spin-off series. Um, so yeah, there's another graphic novel in the works. Forbidden Planet also has a pretty decent book selection. So I decided to again bought, buy some uh, fantasy books mainly. Um, I bought this one, The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making by Catherine M. Valente. Um, this is a book that I put in a co shopping cart, removed it from the shopping cart, put it in again, removed it again, and I just never got around to buying this. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to like it. It seems a bit young. Um, it's I think it's more like aimed at 10-year-olds or something, but I'm still intrigued. I also picked up a Neil Gaiman book. I absolutely adore Neil Gaiman, and this is one book that I don't have yet, so I thought... Um, hey, a boy who grows up in a graveyard and is educated and pretty much raised by ghosts. That sounds like a book I can get into. Again, not necessarily my age demographic, but still something that I think I'll enjoy. And at Forbidden Planet, they had an entire bookcase filled with steampunk. Now, I've never really been into steampunk. I just only recently found out about this whole genre. So I thought I'd pick something up. This is The Bronze Gods by A.A. A. Aguirre. And this seemed to be the most up my alley. It has to do with like some sort of criminal investigation. So there's a bit of fantasy, a little bit of detective work, a little bit of romance, because I found that a lot of the steampunk books are very much centered around romance. And I'm not one who enjoys that. So um, this seemed to be a good one, I hope. I'm not sure. I know nothing about this book other than that I like the cover and that I like the blurb. Only two more books to go. I also picked up this book. This is The Cake Book by Jamie Oliver's Futube, uh, Futube Cupcake Gemma. And she actually signed this. She was having a meetup at her store, Crumbs and Doilies, um, which is located in Soho, just off of Carnaby Street, actually. And you could buy the book and get her autograph and, like, say hello and all that. So it was, like, a special night, and she was there, and she announced it on her YouTube channel, and I'm very, I'm a very faithful watcher of her videos, so I thought I'd pick up the books because it, it, it has all of the classic recipes that she uses. So I just figured, why not give this a go? And I have another new book that I can try some baking with because I think I have to get back into that. Now, of course, I had to save the best for last, and the last book I bought is Harry Potter's film wizardry book. I actually went to the making of Harry Potter Studios at, in Leviston, which is just off of Watford Junction, and they had these here, and I haven't opened it yet because it comes with an acceptance letter, 
uh, an exclusive photo album, a Marauder's Map, Yule Ball Invitation, etc, etc. Um, but this is pretty much the, I, I'm hoping anyways, the book edition of what I saw there. Um, so yeah, it has a ton of different um, uh, input in here on how the movies were made and everything that went on behind the scenes. So I think that will be a cool addition to my ever-growing Harry Potter collection and obsession. So on that note, that's the end of the book haul because those are all the books that I purchased while I was in London. I also got my hands on some beauty bits and some fashion bits, but I didn't want to do haul after haul after haul on this channel. Um, but if that's something you're very interested in seeing, then please let me know in a comment down below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And without further ado, that's it for me for today. I hope you have a really great day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.